Welcome to the Illinois Perinatal Quality Collaborative Labor Management Support eModules. These eModules were made as a resource to support hospital implementation of the ILPQC Promoting Vaginal Birth or PVB initiative. The aim of the PVB initiative is for 70% of Illinois hospitals to be at or below the Healthy People 2030 goal of 23.6% cesarean delivery rate among NTSV or nulliparous term singleton and vertex births by December 31st, 2022. Our goals include increasing the percent of C-sections among NTSV births that meet ACOG SMFM criteria for cesarean, as well as educating physicians, midwives, and nurses on ACOG and SMFM criteria for cesarean, including labor management strategies. Hospital quality improvement teams participating in the PVB initiative are working on five key strategies to reduce cesareans among NTSV births, including labor management support. ILPQC partnered with Jessica Brumley, the co-creator of the Florida Perinatal Quality Collaborative, or FPQC, labor support workshops, completed by over 400 nurses and providers in Florida as part of FPQC's Promoting Primary Vaginal Deliveries, or PROVIDE initiative. Jessica is Director of Midwifery at the University of South Florida Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, where she leads a team of 14 midwives and advanced practice nurses. She also serves as an advisor on the FPQC Provide Initiative. In August and September of 2021, Jessica and ILPQC worked together to offer two live virtual labor management support courses for nurses and providers in Illinois. These sessions were recorded and broken down by topic into this collection of 14 e-modules ranging from 6 to 21 minutes each. We are excited to share them with you. Now I will turn it over to Jessica. And particularly um, because um, if, you know, we're suspecting a baby is malpositioned, then these are tools that we have in order to be able to um, facilitate rotation. You know, some signs of malposition might be that the mother's having back labor, but a lot of people have back labor, even if their baby's perfectly well positioned, honestly. Um, uh, if you're having a prolonged first stage or just kind of like a stall, you know, you're seven centimeters, now you're seven centimeters again, um, you know, that, you know, that's, uh, you should really suspect malposition. And also if when, when you perform a cervical exam, um, you're feeling like a swollen cervix, especially maybe more on one side or kind of the other, or maybe like this persistent anterior lip that's kind of getting swollen. Um, then, um, then you, you should suspect um, malposition. And, and there are several techniques that we can use um, in order to help um, to, you know, to rotate. Um, one is called the, the mile circuit. And the mile circuit is a series of three positions, child's pose, exaggerated sims, um, and, um, and, and, and a lunge, each done at, um, at 30 minute um, intervals. Uh, and um, it is a really powerful tool. Um, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing my screens for a second so that way you can really see the um, video um, that we made um, at the Florida Perinatal Quality Collaborative on, um, on the mile circuit. Um, we'll show the video right now. If um, mom's labor seems to be stalled, or if we suspect malposition, such as an occiput posterior presentation, you may want to consider trying a series of positions known as the mild circuit. Uh, there's three positions in this circuit, and the first one is um, open knee chest. Emily's going to get in the bed and demonstrate this. Also commonly known as child's pose for those of um, you that uh, do some yoga. 
So you want to stay in this position for 30 minutes and you can even start in like the hands and knees cat cow um, position and then just drop down as low as you can go on the bed or on the floor and you want your bottom to be as high as you can. Your knees you can see fairly wide apart and the angle between the torso or the thighs um, should be wider than 90 degrees. So you can wiggle around, put some pillows to make sure she's totally comfortable and relaxed because you'll stay in this position for 30 minutes. Some people call this the start over position because it allows the baby's head to scoot out of the pelvis a bit and it gives them room to be able to rotate or shift their head into a better position. Again, for 30 minutes, you wanna stay in this position and then you can reposition her into an exaggerated sideline position. That would be step two. You can roll her onto her left side, you bring the top leg as high as possible and your bottom leg straight. Emily's really flexible, so she's going to get that top leg nice and high. You really want her to just kind of sink into the bed and relax. Um, and if she can probably sleep, that's even better. Again, you want to keep in this position also for half an hour. Um, and you can try to get your, your right leg up towards your head and it's rolled over onto your belly as, as much as possible. And once you're done with the 30 minutes here, then we're gonna get up and get moving if we can, or if we have an epiduralized patient, uh, then we can do lunges in the bed as well. So the lunge position is an asymmetrical position that really helps to create space on one side of the pelvis. If your patient has an epidural, it's obvious that she would need a lot of help getting into this position, but it's definitely possible. Um, and if she is um, able to get out of bed, then um, an, another way that you can get into this position is by using the foot of the bed drop as low as possible. I find in labor rooms, most of the chairs have wheels. And so the bed is a better way to create this lunge position. And you can see that Emily um, is doing what we call the Captain Morgan, right? She is a pirate today. She is not facing her knee like you would in, at the gym. Uh, instead, she's got her hips open and um, leaning, um, leaning into her knee. One important point is to note that um, you never want to it's, um, lunge your knee over your, um, over your toe. Uh, you don't wanna close your pelvis in that way. Um, and then also, whatever you do on one side, you probably want to do on the other side. Since most times we don't know which side spaces needed. All right. Okay. And that's the mild circuit. So I have, um, we have this part of the presentation has a few videos that we'll continue to share. Um, another uh, position um, is called the sideline um, release. Uh, and I'm sure many of you have heard of the, um, you know, spinning babies um, trainings. And, and this is one that Gail Tully from Spinning Babies um, learned, uh, I believe, from like a chiropractic um, colleague of, of hers. Uh, and, um, and she actually teaches some of these positions to be done during pregnancy, um, but can also be used in labor um, to enlarge and soften um, the pelvis and make room for the baby to turn into a, a better um, position. And um, it can create um, softer pelvic floor um, muscles uh, and, um, and, and can be repeated, you know, every couple of hours. Um, and, you know, this can be helpful, again, for um, babies that are malpositioned or, or asynclitic or if contractions just seem to be more painful than expected. Um, and um, so, so that's um, sometimes another kind of um, sort of trigger for you to you know, think about um, um, malpresentation. And I was actually able to find a video online on, on YouTube of Gail Tully. Somebody must have taken it with their phone or something, you know, teaching this um, technique um, at, um, at a workshop. Uh, and so you'll, you will get to um, hear from her directly. So we'll watch that video now. Four fingers between us, but not my full hand. 
And then this hand is going to cross and hold her hip up so she can't fall off the table. If she doesn't think she's going to fall off the table, she's too far away from the edge. That's why we put the chair here. You could also put a person there. You could put a cupboard there. You could put that side of the bed up in the hospital. Is her belly hanging over? Her, her tummy is totally hanging over. If she's due, she's full term, it's hanging over. Now, I'm going to hang on to her hips with both hands. I'm going to be a guide with my elbow for just the first step, which is for her to lift her top leg. Now, hang on. Watch it. Your bottom leg, so here I place my hands here. The bottom leg is straight as an arrow. We have to do this on both sides or we'll make her pelvic floor uneven. So I'm showing you on one side, but it, she's gonna do it on the other side before she leaves the stroke. Now lift your top leg 30 degrees. My elbow's up to you, feel my elbow. Now bring it forward over the front and gently lower it. And relax that knee and that ankle. Soft as a noodle. Somebody said a cooked noodle, Gail? Yeah. <laughs> now see how my legs are? I'm pressing. And when she's pregnant and in labor, or if she's in labor, you can do this too. And you are working it. When you're not pregnant, you're not, for some reason, it's typically easier than. Now I can feel that her SI joints are one above the other. So if I push her too far, this top one goes too, goes that way compared to the other. And if I let her hang over the edge, this one is closer to me than the bottom one. So I want them equal. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And I keep my hands here except for when I check. That's it. I don't be talking this, oh, relax your leg. Oh, how, you know, how you doing? Oh, I can do this, though. <laughs> I'm doing a little bit of downward pressure. And if you have somebody who's really tight, you can give them a little jiggle. Because what does jiggling do to soft muscle? Releases it. So it's a little bit of a rocking motion, rocking the boat. When, um, in, in one of her other videos, you actually see, um, you actually see a, a visual of the, the ligaments and how they stretch, right? In, you know, in that, um, in, in that position. And, um, and that was like a great, really powerful visual. I like how she uses like the pelvis and shows how, um, how positions help to change that um, and, and really helps you to kind of think through um, what you're, um, you know, you know, what you're doing and how you're helping patients. Somebody asked in, you know, in, in the chat, like if somebody can't hold something for as long as is recommended, is it okay to do it for less? And, and I, and I always feel like some change, um, in position is better than no change, you know, in, in position. Um, so, you know, we, you know, we, we do, we do the best that we can. <laughs> Um, so she recommends, for instance, letting the, the leg hang like this through, you know, three contractions. Um, and, and, you know, we do do the best if she can't hold it for three and she does it for two, then um, that's, you know, that, that's great. That's better than zero. Um.